do we still hide? I mean, th- th- that's the question. Can you imagine that? A whole country literally hiding for centuries. You know, I, I started thinking about it. I, I hide stuff. I, I mean, I literally hide stuff at my house, like, like candy that I like, that I want to keep to myself. I hide it. Uh, we have an outdoor refrigerator, freezer. It's in another little uh, outdoor room to our house. And with that small freezer, I get haagen chocolate and peanut butter ice cream. And I hide it in there. That was a little pint. All con- I can't afford but one or two at a time. And only BOGO at Publix. That's the only time I ever buy it. BOGO at Publix. The haagen chocolate and peanut butter. So I hide that in my refrigerator, freezer, outside. Because I don't, I don't want anybody else to get it. You know, there's other stuff I actually hide in my house. I, I actually hide my guns in my ammunition because I don't want my grandson to, to get those, nor do anybody else, truthfully. I, I don't want to take a chance on anybody finding them, actually. So, so I hide stuff. I hide stuff for selfish reasons. I, I hide stuff for safety reasons. I, I don't want, I want somebody to hurt themselves. And, and that's what a lot of us do. But sometimes we have a tendency maybe to hide things that we're embarrassed about. We, we, we hide that credit card and that credit card bill because there's something on there we don't want anybody else to see. Um, have you ever uh, sent bills particularly to your work or have you ever sent uh, packages to your work because you're embarrassed about them and you don't want anybody else in your household to find out about them? Have you ever had your own post office box that you ever told anybody about because you get certain things sent there that you don't want anybody else to know about. But I have another question. Have you ever hidden anything from someone that was actually very important? Uh, or have you hidden something from someone that actually could benefit them? You know, I've actually heard of people hiding money, uh, hiding income uh, from others in their household for, or hiding investments from others in their household. And sometimes we actually hide information. We keep it to ourselves because that information, it actually could help somebody or help could bring comfort to somebody, but but we keep it in. But by and large, if I ask you, have you ever hidden anything that would really benefit someone else? Most of you would probably say, no, I really don't hide anything that would benefit somebody else. So let me jump into this quickly because I I know we're, we're at the end of this series and you're thinking, okay, what does this have to do with anything? Let me quickly tell you, what, what, this is the reason we showed that opening clip today. Because we, as believers in Jesus Christ, have a tendency to hide the kingdom of God. We have a tendency to hide the kingdom of God. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, hide the kingdom of God. But we're doing it in plain sight but we're hiding. It's in plain sight, but we're still hiding it. You know, in the last year, year and a half, we have had a wonderful opportunity to be able to be a part of a church without having to go to a campus. And it is still a great option. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, you're, obviously, you're watching there right now. So it's a great option for you, and you, you've taken advantage of it uh, for way over a year and a half, maybe even longer than that. But, but think about it. If that's all you, that you do, is all you do is you, is, you, is you, from the comfort of your own home, your phone, your beach house, your lake house, or even traveling in the car, and, and all you do is just watch us and participate in worship this way. But the only people that ever know about it is just maybe the person sitting next to you, and maybe a couple other family members that come in the room while you're watching. What good is that? If, if that's all you do, really. You know, Hadn't you, hadn't you in, a, in essence, hidden the kingdom of God if you never let anybody know what you're doing and you're worshiping? You know, the, the church trend, and this trend has been going on a long time, and the, actually the pandemic uh, pushed this trend quicker to the forefront of churches literally not wanting to grow. I, I'm telling the truth. Churches didn't and do not want to grow. They may tell you one thing, but, they, but it's different. They really don't want to grow. It's almost like how many of us think about the nuclear family, okay? Or as Bush said, nuclear. 
the nuclear family where you think of, you know, mom, dad, one kid, two kid type thing. And, and we have this idea in our minds that it doesn't need, doesn't, doesn't need to be very big. You know, one or two kids, maybe three, maybe four kids. We don't want it bigger than that. Right? And we think about this logically in our heads because we don't, we don't want our families to get bigger because we think of the financial cost and we think of the college cost and, and wedding costs. All that stuff goes through our mind as we keep having kids. Well, we don't want to be any bigger than that. And there's churches out there that actually think that way, that they, they don't want to get any bigger than they are. They, that they, have a, they have a thought that, oh, the church can be too big and we don't want it to be too big. That's, that's the mind, mindset of so many Truthfully, the vast majority of the churches are in this category. They don't want to be any bigger than they are because that, there could be too many people, right? And, and so churches like this, by and large, have sort of given up this idea of, of trying to help people, okay? Of trying to uh, at least go to a deeper level with people. Yeah, there's tons of churches, I promise you, do, uh, do some type of outreach. They'll give money uh, they'll send food, stuff like that. Most churches, most churches literally do that. But to go on a deeper level, to have, have face-to-face contact with people and, and have them come to your church to worship alongside of you, sit beside you, eh, we don't, we don't, I don't know if we want that. We, we don't want to get contaminated. We, we don't want them to be a part of, of us. We don't want to engage anybody. Really, we, we just don't want to engage anybody. We, we don't want to know our neighbors. We don't want to go to lunch with our coworkers because we think, you know, what, what the world is a terrible, terrible place. It's, it's awful. And so we come, we come to church. We are part of a church. And all the time we're praying, Jesus, just come quickly. Get me out of this awful place. Let's just, let's just get this over with. Everything here is tough and, and, and bad. Just come quickly, get me out of this. So, let's go back to Wakanda. Because in that movie, The Black Panther, the, I think the, that God's people might have the same mindset as the people of Wakanda had for centuries. Okay, And, and that mindset is this, we still hide. We, we have this wonderful thing to ourselves And we don't want to share it with anybody. Yes, we have the answers. We have hope. We have mercy. But let's keep hiding. Let's keep it our secret. There are so many problems that the nation of Wakanda could help with. But they remain shielded from the world. This this metal, this, you know, outer space metal vibranium uh, has advanced their kingdom beyond anybody else in the Marvel Universe, (laughs) basically. They had, better, they had very advanced medicine and science and technology, everything. In this next scene that you're going to see, you're going to meet Nakia. N- Nakia has been outside of Wakanda. She's what they call a war dog, sent out into the world, almost like an am- a silent ambassador, a secret ambassador. And, and she has saw uh, things that, that she had never thought, she, that she'd never see in Wakanda. She saw obviously sex trafficking, she saw abuse, she saw enslavement, she saw killing, she saw poverty. And when she comes back, when, when they get her to come back to the Wakanda, because they're going to be the, um, Ch- Ch- T'Challa is going to be anointed king type thing, and she's back for that, uh, they have this conversation. And just, just as a side, Nakia is uh, T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther, that is his love interest in this movie. Let's watch. So Nakia sees the need. She, she knows it. She's been out there. She, she sees what the world has going, and she knows Wakanda can help. She, she wants to share what Wakanda has to the world that needs help, that, that, to, to give hope to those who are really uh, don't see any way out, who, who, who think they just have to live the rest of their lives in pain and disability, and she knows Wakanda can help. So I wonder, what, what do we see when we look at the world around us? Think about it. What do we see when we look at the world around us? You see, if we have experienced great grace, if we have experienced forgiveness, if we have experienced peace, if we have experienced what it means to live a life of purpose, 
and we see people that don't have any of that, what do we do? What do we say? What do we think? Do we go full Jerry Seinfeld and say, what a shame, that's a shame. Or do we think, you know, we really need to do something about this. You see, we need to be reminded of the kingdom that we have. We need to be reminded of the kingdom we have. The, the kind of kingdom that we offer people is, is a kingdom where we experience a relationship with Jesus Christ. God's kingdom. So what kind of kingdom is God's kingdom? Let's just run through this real quick. God's kingdom overcomes physical misery and brings healing. Jesus was very clear when he told his disciples this. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, now some people think that, oh, that this healing went away whenever, whenever the early church was, got established. It, no, it didn't. We have people in our church that bank on this, that have that are living this because they have experienced this healing. They have experienced God's touch on their life. They understand that God, being a part of God's kingdom, you can overcome misery and you can have healing. Also, God's kingdom overcomes death and brings resurrection. This is probably the one that, that gives us a lot of hope. This is one that, that helps us in the middle of, of grieving to, to, to have actually some positive thoughts, even in the midst of that grieving. Now, now actually, what Jesus said, look, look at, watch at this in Matthew 10, 7. As you go, he's telling the disciples, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead. How about that? He tells his disciples to raise the dead. Okay? Now, now when we look at, at their ministry initially, this, this didn't happen. Jesus actually only raised three people. Do you, do you remember the stories? Not, you can go look them up. But only three people did Jesus actually raise from the dead. But if this was part of, of the kingdom of God at the time, why wasn't there more? Here's, here's a pretty simple explanation. Who wants to die twice? Who, who physically wants to die twice? I mean, it's, that'd be a sort of a pain, right? Most of us remember Lazarus. Poor dude had to die twice, okay? So probably that might have been the reason why we don't go there a lot, why we don't won't talk about this a lot, uh, and why we tend to think of the end part, the resurrection of the dead, after, when like Jesus, resurrected from the dead, and we think of that when we die in our mortal bodies also. Also, God's kingdom overcomes oppression and deliverance. Now, depending on where you are from or how you grew up, this could, this could be very significant uh, in your life because you, you may have experienced this. You, uh, you may be out there thinking that you're too sophisticated to think of, of, of having demons because this is what this is talking about, oppression, overcoming the oppression of, of demons because Jesus said in Luke eleven twenty, but if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. In other words, that's how you know about the kingdom of God because the demons are being driven out. And, and in our part of the world, because of our sophistication, we don't literally think of, of being possessed by demons and everything. But you know what? Demons come in many shapes and sizes. Demon comes, demons come in many forms. And in God's kingdom, all are defeated. Also, God's kingdom overcomes rebellion and brings conversion. We should be jumping, jumping up and down and be excited about being a part of God's kingdom for this reason. Because if you have not rebelled yet, don't worry, you will. If your child has not rebelled yet, don't worry, they will. And Jesus said this, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So just, he was, he's telling them, have faith like a, like a little child. But is it that easy? Well, he says this. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a, a camel. Well, I tell you, I'm going to go back to verse 23. Truly, I tell you, it's hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then 
can be saved. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. See, this is the promise of God's kingdom. All is possible. All is possible. All people can change. All people, all people uh, who, who rebel can convert and be saved because it's not just a person's life within itself, right? It's God working in them. It's God doing something in them that only God can do. We remind you this every time we baptize either a baby or an adult or a student. It's God's working there, okay? God's kingdom overcomes condemnation and brings forgiveness. You know, you know we heard last week uh, about how, um, about, about tax collectors. You know, Trey, Trey taught us last week a little bit about the tax collectors. We heard some more about it in, v, in VBS. And here's what Jesus said. Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Which means there's hope for all of us. There's hope for all of us because in God's kingdom, we overcome the condemnation that the world gives and we have forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Now, God's kingdom also overcomes wrongdoing and brings righteousness. Jesus said, and y'all probably heard this before, Lord's Prayer, part of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when the kingdom comes, the will of God is done, and the will of God, when it's, when it's done, that brings righteousness. And Paul said, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness. God's kingdom changes the way people live. God's kingdom changes the way people live. Also, God's kingdom overcomes sadness and brings joy. And, and, and Paul makes it pretty clear. If, if the kingdom brings life and healing and deliverance and conversion and forgiveness and righteousness, that means there will be great joy. Let's continue that rest of that verse, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then Matt, Jesus tells, tells us in Matthew, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, in some other modern, modern translations, you have what? Happy are those. So even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of pain, there can, in God's kingdom, you can overcome that sadness and have great joy. You can overcome that pain and have great joy. And God's kingdom overcomes aimless futility and brings purposeful ministry. Hear these two verses. Listen to them. And, and has made us to be, made you and me, Jesus has made you and me a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. But you are a chosen people, a holy priesthood, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So when we know Jesus, get this, we take the burdens of the people to God. We take the burdens of people to God. And, and we, as we get close to people, we bring them the blessings of God. We can't do that if we are hidden. We can't do that if we keep it to ourselves. See, a priest, what does the priest do? He brings God's kingdom into every situation. He brings God's kingdom to bear in every relationship. And you and I are priests in this kingdom. That should be our purpose. That should be our aim. We have all this. This is God's kingdom. We have all this. What should we do? At the end, after a lot of stuff had went on, a lot of fighting and a lot of back and forth between a couple guys in this movie, what did the nation of Wakanda do? What did King T'Challa do? Watch. The kingdom of God 
is not to be hidden, but shared. It, it, it's not a treasure to be buried away. It, or it's not something to be put away for safekeeping. It's to be spread to all. So here's, here's what I want to challenge you to do. Make this your first priority, God's kingdom. Make that your first priority. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Let's make God's kingdom our priority. Let's make Bible reading more important than watching TV. Let's make prayer more important than listening to music. Let's make gathering with other Jesus followers more important with, than gathering with other fans of your favorite team. Let's make a relationship with our King stronger by actually spending time with Him. Let's take our finances to God and say, God, your kingdom first. And I want, to remember, want you to remember this also. We all have a place. We all have a place. T'Challa gave his sister a new assignment. And we need an assignment. You and I do. We, what is our assignment in the kingdom? Have, where are you supposed to be serving? This, this really is, this is a, a call for you to serve, to, to come out from being hidden and to be out in the world. Jesus the King is giving out assignments. Let me ask you, have, have, you drawn, have you grown close enough to the King to know what your assignment is? Maybe it is working with children. Maybe, maybe you should have been here last week at, at Bible school helping out. Maybe you should be on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays or special events with the kids. Maybe that's where you need to be serving Maybe it's starting an outreach. We, there's a young couple in our church that ha has taken upon themselves to, had to start an outreach to, to help people um, reduce some repairs and, and get, get a better home situation. So they just started that. Just, just love that they started that. It, maybe it's a, being a part of Celebrate Recovery every Thursday night. Every Thursday night. Be a part of Celebrate Recovery in some way. Maybe it's be a part of student ministry. I've I messaged this just this past week. I messaged two young adults, uh, a dude and a lady. And I messaged them about leading sixth grade small group. And both of them said, yes. Yes. They're, they're, they're taking that gift, they're taking that desire to want to serve, to, to want to make a difference. They're taking it to the next level. And they're stepping up. And in August, on Wednesday nights, they'll be here every week. Maybe that's where you need to be. You have a place. You all have a place somewhere. And sitting back and waiting on other, el other people, you're just hiding. You're just hiding. You, you just step out. Because the bottom line is we need to share the good news. Jesus said we are salt that, and, and we are light. So I dare you to start praying for the people you work with. I dare you to start loving those around you. I dare you to open your eyes and see the need that's all around you. There are a lot of people hurting out there. You don't have to go far to find a hurting person. Jesus says the kingdom of God is among you. The, king, the kingdom of God is among you, he said. The kingdom of God. We have the kingdom of God, which means we have the answers. We have the ability to help. We have the truth. We have the truth the world needs. And we can help. We can help the hurting. We can bring light into the darkness. And we have a, the love that is needed to heal the brokenness of our cities. God's kingdom is forever. And we need to share it. God's kingdom forever. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for reminding us today that, that, that our kingdom, the kingdom that we're a part of, is awesome. Better than anything else that the world has to offer, better than anything else than the world claims they have to offer. And God, let us come out from the shadows. Let's 
Let's let the world know what we know. And that is you, your son, and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.